Right, we're on a journey to learn to use this thing. It's the Mecra Carvera Air. Now, if you're already conversant with CNC machines and all you really want me to do is turn it on and swap a few bits out, then it's not the video for you. My assumption is that this is something you're brand new to. It's something you've been thinking about. It's something you'd like to know about. It's something that maybe you'll actually do something with, but you have next to no experience, actually. That's just like me. I've never used one of these before. Sure, I've done a lot of 3D printing, but I've never used a CNC machine, and they're very different. On the one hand, 3D printing, well, it adds things on. It's additive manufacturing. On the other hand, this thing knocks lumps out of a block. It's subtractive manufacturing. So it's completely different in how it approaches it. So, if you're wanting to learn this, then we have to go through a learning process. It's not going to be something that you're going to immediately pick up and do. And showing you how to swap out the head or turn it on or load up some software is going to be of no help to you whatsoever. It will still be a mysterious black box as you try to get to grips with what it is. Because the first step you need to do, obviously, is draw something. We need to draw something on the computer to be able to get it into here. And the question is, how do you draw something? What do you use? Well, we use a CAD CAM program. But the real skill isn't actually in using the program, oddly enough. And I can't tell you how often I tell people this and how they don't think it's right and then end up learning it. The real skill is being able to see something in three dimensions. We're used to seeing things flat. We draw them on a piece of paper, we write them out, we think of them as two-dimensional, and then converting it so you can see the whole thing in three dimension is actually a bit challenging for people. And to be honest, it doesn't matter what you use to do that. You can use Lego blocks if you want to do that. It'll give you a sense of an object in three dimensions and how are you going to approach designing that object without ever touching a CAD program. The next CAD program I recommend is the computer equivalent of Lego blocks, and that's Tinkercad. Once you get used to moving things around in a work plan and adding them and subtracting them in the computer, you'll get a very good sense of how that object looks in three dimensions, how three dimensions affect each other, and how that three-dimensional object is going to be when you bring it into the real world. And Tinkercad really is the Lego block building program of 3D design. And for me, as an introduction to all of that, absolutely awesome. But at some stage or other, you're going to need to swap to another program. And that other program then is going to be the, in inverted commas, real program. And that's what this makes us actually do. Because with this thing, we need to do something that is hidden. What we need to do is change that three-dimensional drawing into a set of instructions that we can send to this machine, and those instructions move the tool head up and down and around exactly how we want it to. That part of it isn't in Tinkercad, and we need another program that contains that. Now, most of them do, actually, most of the higher end. And it really becomes a question of what you're comfortable with working with. It's all about your workflow and what you're comfortable with. And the only guidance on choosing a 3D program is work with a few and see which suits you. Now I'm going to use FreeCAD. I'm going to use FreeCAD purely because it's free and it suits me and it'll do what I want to do. But it's always the same routine. Now when you open any 3D printing program, the first thing you're going to be confronted with is a blank screen and a lot of toolboxes, and they can be quite frightening. If you know where you're going, that is, you've got a sense of three dimensions and you know what that object is going to be, then getting there is very much easier than if you've got no idea whatsoever and you have this screen full of tools. That's where learning what a three-dimensional object is like and how to manipulate it in a computer space is so important. You learn that in something like Tinkercad, you'll already have an intuitive way of grasping what it is in front of you. Now, this is clearly a 3D printed object, and like all 3D printed objects, and in fact, like all objects that are man made, it's an assembly of parts. It's made of separate parts. There's the actual clock face. It, it, what this is is a um, reciprocating clock. It, 
counts up to 12 and then flips back and swaps between AM and PM instead of going all the way around. But it's like everything. It's made up of parts and I can disassemble this assembly into its parts so we can have a look at the parts separately. Then we can design those parts and put the parts together in an assembly. Now, 80-90% of what you want to design is going to be basically the same thing. It's a, a collection of cylinders or cubes or arcs or whatever. It's basically the same bit and those bits are referred to as primitives. Now, primitives are provided to you in Tinkercad, which is why it's a, a Lego building system. It's why it can build things so quickly, because you don't have to make the primitives. You make the parts out of primitives and then make your assembly from that. Uh, and it's astounding. I mean, if you think about Lego and you think about what these Lego engineers do, they do the most astounding machines out of what are essentially primitives. And we are doing the same thing. Tinkercad provides you with the primitives. Other programs, you have to create the primitives yourself, and that tends to be, to my mind, where they differ. But all of them go through exactly the same processes. They build a primitive, they put the primitive together in parts, you create a whole load of parts and put them together in an assembly. When you look at a CAD program, you'll see that replicated. Because CAD programs mirror the real world. They have to. If they didn't, they wouldn't be CAD programs. Where this helps you is when you're looking at a program, you're not trying to learn the whole program. That would take you absolutely ages and be utterly confusing. Think about when you drive. When you're driving, you don't look everywhere. You look where is important, which is basically in front of you and sometimes to the back. And if you want to turn off, you'll notice the signs. You focus on the important things. And it's the same thing in drawing in CAD. You focus on the important things. How do you draw a primitive? Where is the circle? Where is the rectangle? How do you make it a solid? These are relatively simple things that will take up 80% of your time in drawing something and all CAD programs provide them. It's just really a question of where they are. Now when it comes to the logic of a CAD program, because all programs are also written with the logic, then the designer has had a think about how to make this, believe it or not, easy for you. And what they tend to do is separate it to what they call workbenches. Very often you'll find a workbench will pull up a certain set of tools that will enable you to do something like draw a primitive, make the primitive apart, put the parts together in an assembly. And you look at the screen for those important bits that you actually want to focus on. The rest of it well, you'll learn that in time, and sometimes you'll never use any of it because it's just not for you. If you don't focus down, all you'll see is a massive jumble of stuff. If you remember what it is you're trying to do, that is reflect the real world experience, then you look for the thing that will do that job. If you want a circle, well, look on the toolbar, you'll find a circle. If you're trying to draw a part and you're in the assembly's workbench, you're going to have a challenge. So have a click on the pull down and find part. Click on part and you'll be able to sketch. Click on sketch and you'll see a circle. If you're not seeing these things, you're in the wrong place. Just search around until you find them. Just in the same way as if you're driving. Ignore most of it. Focus on what's important to you and you'll suddenly find it easy. If you do that, then you're going to follow the logic of what the designers did, because the designers are only trying to mirror a real-world experience for you. So don't get lost in the computer screen. Think what it is you're actually trying to do when you're creating a real thing, and that will be mirrored in the program. Look at the program, the little pull-down screens, the little pretty pictures, to find the bit you want and just ignore the rest. Right. So, I've been talking about CAD for the last 10 minutes and not turned on a computer. So I can more or less guarantee there's going to be a group of people who go, well, there's 10 minutes of my life wasted. What a waste of time. I'll never get that back. And sure, for some people, that is the case. And those people, I think, will be split into two.
There'll be a whole group of them who already know about CAD and didn't need to watch the video anyway. And then there'll be a whole group of people who think that learning CAD is about looking at programs and all they'll ever do is convince themselves how difficult CAD is and it'll remain a mysterious black box. Because what's fundamental is understanding what it is you're trying to do. When you understand what it is you're trying to do, then CAD programs will have those tools to do them. Otherwise, they wouldn't be CAD programs. But you may have to clutch something. So say if you've got a garage and you don't have every tool in the world and your spanner doesn't quite fit, well, you use an adjustable. Adjustables aren't as good, sure. There's a spanner that fits because they have a tendency to slip and round off the nuts. But they will work. And that's the way I've dealt with it. I want to do a job and I look for the tool. I don't let the tool dictate to me what the job is. There's a whole group of people who think that you have to have the perfect tool for the job. And yes, that really helps. But it's not always the case. Now, I get told that I'm a master at Tinkercad. And I can assure you I'm by no means a master at Tinkercad. I barely know the program. I know that somewhere in there is a tool to do the job that I want to do, and if there isn't, I can clutch it until there is. That's all I actually know, because I swap things around from letting the tool dictate the job to me using the job to dictate the tool. That reverse is super important, and if you can get hold of that, then, to be honest, all these CAD programs are basically the same. They, they have various good things about them, various bad things about them, and it's going to be what you like and what you dislike, and the way you're going to discover that is by doing it. But the bulk of them, in fact all of them, do exactly the same thing. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a CAD program. And if you work with it, you'll learn to love or hate whatever it is that you happen to be working with. It really in essence, doesn't matter that much what you choose to go with. What really matters is that you get hold of the idea of what it is you're trying to do and then looking for the tool to do it. That should give you pigeonholes to help you get hold of whatever program it is you're looking at and line it up from a confusing jumble of bits, most of which you ignore anyway, to finding the bits you want to do to do the job you want to do. So I would say far from being a waste of time, if you can get hold of that idea, you've made an enormous leap into the world of CAD because it isn't that complex. It isn't that complex because most of what you want to do isn't that difficult. It's cylinders and squares you've put together. Anyway, we will look at some real programs. Free CAD is going to be the one that I'm going to use to look at how to do some of this stuff. But that fundamental idea doesn't get talked about much or nearly enough. If you can get hold of that, I think you've taken a leap ahead. It's certainly what I do, and I'm by no means a master of any CAD program. It's just how I tend to look at things. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helped. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.